It's more and more featuring Karen Harding on Drive Time. My name's James. Thank you for tuning in to Dance FM. All right, here we are. Moment of truth. So I walk into work today, and my buddy Safe tells me, you're sitting down with a legend today. I said, really? I said, who? And that's why right now I've got for you Kenny Dope Gonzalez. May know him from Masters at Work. What's Chaos. up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing, <laughs> what's man? What's up, Dubai? I'm good. It was good, man. It is a pleasure to meet you. What's up, man? Thank you. Uh, so you were telling me that you've uh, you've been to the UAE pretty often, right? A few times. A few okay. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what brings you here this time? I'm actually doing Analog Room tomorrow. So you know, coming in and play some music, some Amazing. underground music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Do you like the vibe of uh, just you know performing here in general? It's different every time, you know, so, so I don't really know what to expect every time I come because it's a different venue, it's a different promotion team, you know what I mean? But all the times I've been here, it's been amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. We love our music here. No doubt. Especially sure. dance music. Uh-huh. So, um, Kenny, I want to ask you, because uh, looking into your past and just your upbringing and how you got into music, mm-hmm. it's a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess if we want to take it to just the very first, you know, few years, what got you into the mind state of I want to make music, and mm. uh, and maybe if you got this, who were some of like the key influences for you? The first time was actually, you know, being being in a neighborhood like Sunset. Um, there was a lot going on. You know, what I mean, I had a lot of different uh, type of people around. There was a lot of uh, friction, action, drama going on. And I didn't want to be in the street. You know what mm. I'm saying? I had friends that died in the street. I had friends that went to jail because of the street. You know what I mean? And um, that's something I didn't want to do. So music was one of those things that I said, that's what I want to do. Okay. You so kind of just a way to give yourself some opportunity. For sure. You know, school wasn't, wasn't um, you know, we wasn't in the greatest schools. And there was nothing of interest. You know what I'm saying? So music was the was the thing and plus growing up that's all i heard in my house you right. know what i mean my dad played a lot of latin music growing up so that's what just what got me into it that's crazy and what what's your uh, your family background puerto rico puerto, puerto rican. rican puerto rican yeah okay very cool so it's it's kind of crazy though we were talking uh, kenny and i about how we kind of grew up on opposite sides no of, doubt. of mm-hmm. the us mm-hmm. uh, brooklyn must be crazy though so so all right so from then how does uh, Masters at Work come about? Well, pretty much in 1985, I worked at a record store called w Music Center in Sunset. Um, that record store, you know, taught me a lot about a lot of different styles of music in general because I had to sell it. That was the main thing of, of getting the job was being able to be able to sell alternative music, rock music, Latin music, soul, funk, hip hop, reggae. You know what I mean? And at first I was just like, really? I have to learn about all these styles? And it was like, he was like, yeah, that's the only way you're getting a job. So that was the best thing that ever happened because that exposed me to a lot of different genres early. Okay. You know what I mean? And that was the birth of Masters at Work because at that same time, we started doing lab- uh, neighborhood parties, you know, as Masters at Work. Okay. And it was me, myself, um, Mike Delgado and Franklin Martinez who did these parties. At that same time, Todd Terry was coming in to the neighborhood to buy records at the store. Okay. So he was already recording. He was making records. He was, you know, starting to get his feet wet in, in, in the production and in the industry. And, um, you know, there came a time where he used a lot of different uh, group names. You know what I'm saying? And um, he wanted to use Masters of Work. So I was like, all right, you could use it, but I'm going to need it back because I'm I'm planning to start my own <laughs> thing one of these days. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was about 86. Okay. So he used the name actually in 87, 87, 88. But in 90, um, throughout that whole network, I met Louis Vega. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was it. That was pretty much it. He invited me to the studio. He was like, come through. And once we started working on a few things, we were working on Mark Anthony's album, his first album. Um, a few India songs um, and he was like look man I want to make a production team and I was like well I got the perfect name and then that's how it, that's how it basically started from there okay very cool and the relationship between you and Louis Vega how would you describe it um, very unique yeah you know um, with two different types of people we dress totally different <laughs> we're into different music um, our outlooks are different everything is different so I think that's what makes it's so unique and the and the and the production team so unique because we bring two totally different things to the table right. on every aspect. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I like harder stuff, he's like, nah, tone it down a little bit. You but, know what I mean? And, and But that's the dynamic of it, is yin and yang, you know? Exactly. And I was just going to say, sometimes that's a good thing because it, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes you're going to butt heads and stuff. But Nah, nah. We never butt heads. That's right. the thing. You, yeah, yeah, but you, you know, it's like, like you can bring something to the table mm-hmm. that he maybe didn't or the other way around because exactly. you guys don't think, act, dress, all of that. It's not no, the same. Exactly. That's, that's, what, that's what made it what it was. But one thing that we did, we made a pact early. We was like, look, if you don't like something, say it. We erase it. No questions asked. Wow. Same thing back and forth. So everything that we've always done has been a thousand percent that we've been into it. You know what I'm saying? And no egos. Look, you don't like it? All right, let's move on. Let's yeah. make the best possible record, recording, remix, whatever it is that we possibly can. That's dope. Yep. Kenny Dope, we're going to come back with you in a couple minutes. I have some other stuff I want to talk to you about, uh, no specifically Dope Wax Records. We'll get back to it right after Throttles All In. Stick with me. It's drive time. It's 97.8 Dance FM All in by Throttle You're listening to Drive Time with me, James But more importantly We've got Kenny Dope in the studio with us Yo, 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 what's up? (laughs) Not used to those uh, Thursday weekends, huh? Yeah, man We're here, we're here Alrighty, it's 5.35. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, so, Kenny, I wanted to ask you about your... Actually, before we go into that, Mm -hmm. is it true that you own over 50,000 records? That's correct. So you just... Vinyl records. That is crazy, man. And there's probably about another six, 7,000 CDs, actually. It's crazy. What? Where do you store them all? At the house. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> that is crazy. That's insane. But you really are a lover of music and you were talking about it, it doesn't yeah. matter the genre. Nah, this is it was mandatory when we traveled to these countries to to uh witness and 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 collect music from the region. Yeah. No matter where we were. Okay. You know, and learn about local artists whether it was in Germany, whether it was in France, or London, England, wherever. What's you a, know what I mean? What's a country that you um pleasantly surprised you i guess with or you know you heard music there that you were like wow i didn't even know this was the culture you know what's crazy my 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 years for for collecting is 68 to 74 oh wow okay okay so in that bracket all the countries influence each other yeah. you know what i'm saying so so you know if you had a hendrix at, we had a hendrix you know what i'm saying and and other countries joined in yeah and local bands joined into the sound so it's like you get all these different versions of you know a specific style you know what i mean um and then you you go to a a region that's heavily percussive or with 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 instruments and and percussion they add their flavor to it you know what i mean and it just keeps evolving it just keeps moving that's really fun though so you kind of in a way saw just the evolution of of that era yeah you know i like the sound i like those years you know what i mean and like i said it was i wanted to learn about music in general and you know what you know what's crazy we constantly learn it every day Mm -hmm. about somebody's unearthing this this recording from 1973 that nobody never heard and it's amazing you know what i'm saying so it keeps going you know my biggest question is how much was recorded ever and it's just like one of those things that it's just like you know it's it's be honest. You know? Life's one of uh, one of life's unanswered questions, bro. Right, for real. So, uh, Kenny, tell me about Dope Wax Records. Yeah, pretty much. You know, Dope Wax started. You know, back in 1989. You know, was given to me by Frank Mendez at New Groove Records to, to for me to put out my own music. Okay. And we've kept it going all these years. You know, what I'm saying primarily now we're just focusing on new production, new kids, new new producers. You know, um, teaching them, you know, how to make records and stuff like that, and and that's basically what we're doing. And so, do you you have right now under that uh, under that label, Dope Wax? Do you have someone up and coming that you're super excited about? Or you know what's crazy? They're all learning at the same time, and they all coming to the table with things. You know, we got DJ Tommy Bones, we got Alexander Technique, who, who's more on the on the techno side of things. You know. Um, there's Will Rosario that's more on the Afro side. So it's like everybody's got a different pocket, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And it's about putting out good music, you know, and, and I always say there's there's two types of music, good and bad, and, and we're putting out the good music. There you go. You got it. So you can check out uh, all of the artists that are you've been and coming right now yep, on Dope no Wax. Doubt. That's amazing. Um, so 
One thing I, I feel like I almost have to ask you about is mm -hmm. the bomb. To, okay. How um, how did it come about? Did you expect it to be as big as no. it is even still today? No. Nah. You know, the the record was a B side on a on a on a on a twelve inch. Um, we didn't know what it was gonna be. You just just one of those things. But you know, as I was making the record, you know, one thing happened that ended up to be something incredible was um, as I was mixing the song, um, I was recording the 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 mix down live, and my drum machine has sequences on it. So you you. I had like about 16 sequences, different sequences of the song. My buttons were getting stuck Okay. as I was going into the next sequence. So that sequence repeated. So I was like, okay. So then <laughs> as it came around again, my button got stuck again and I couldn't go to the next sequence that I wanted to. But I was like, you know what? That sounded pretty cool. So then I was like, you know what? Let's let it run. And that was the whole intro. Oh my before goodness. the before the big horns come in, what? you know, you know what I mean, and it ended up to be that on the dance floor, that was the climax of the record when the big actual hook came in. Yeah, but honestly, it was a mistake. You know what I'm saying? So wow. that was a mistake, and then um, you know, putting it on the B side of a 12 inch that we didn't know was gonna blow, and it just ended up blowing. You know what I mean? That's insane. Yeah, just goes to show you though. I mean, you never know. You never know. I've I've heard a lot nah. of people say like with hits or with records that just go big you don't really make it with that in mind you know what it is you just gotta as much as we record you just gotta put everything out yeah no matter what if you don't really like it because you know what somebody's made like that record yeah you know and you just don't know where these records are going to travel either you know what i'm saying because when you start seeing these royalty checks and and publishing checks come in from these countries that you can't pronounce yeah and and it was a track that you were like oh, i didn't really like that but it's like somebody likes it somebody's playing yeah. it you know what i mean so yeah. it, it just got to go with it most definitely that's amazing that's got to be a good feeling too yeah you know mm -hmm. all right kenny g thank you sorry kenny Th g kenny dope thank it's all right so man much. that's my last name peace hey, man hey, thank I you thank you for you, having man. me thank you all right that's kenny dope on drive time with me james Word thanks for up. tuning in <laughs>